Hello and welcome to the final AFCB TV preview show of the season. Neil Perrett, formerly of the Bournemouth Daily Echo and now a member of our media team here at AFC Bournemouth joins me and we'll be looking ahead to another big week in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that fantastic 1-0 victory over Spurs here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be discussing the season in general and looking at all of the highs that have come with it. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to Sunday's game against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. But first, there's just one place to start, and that is with last weekend's 1-0 victory over Spurs here at Vitality Stadium. Let's remind ourselves of the highlights. Song still has it, Danny Rose in support from the left-hand side. Danger once again, Rose's cross, Morris header, Travers again! Brilliant goalkeeping, Morris header, Travers heading for the top corner, threw up his hand and palmed it away. Here's Son from the short corner now. Son tried to go past Lerma, but no way past the uh, Colombian wall. And Cherries will try and bring it away. Fraser can't quite manage to smuggle it clear. And then he goes down under pressure from Son. And Son's pushed Lerma over. That's going to be a red card for Son. You don't get away with that. Sent off. Threw an arm out at Jefferson Lerma. Son Hyun Min. It's a moment of madness from the Korean. He's just back from suspension. He's floored Jefferson Lerma. And he's off. Oh, no. I just don't understand what he was thinking there, son. It was some sort of altercation, but he just, two hands, pushes him over, and the referee's got no option. Fraser was pushed by Son. Jefferson Lerma tried to take a quick free kick, and Son, for some reason, Son wasn't... Um, I, it, that's I still what he's doing. Four, two, two, one. Ooh, that's a bad dangerous. challenge. Bad challenge on Simpson from one point. He's gone through the young man. That's another red card. One point has been sent off after two minutes having come on as a substitute. And Spurs are down to nine. Well, a... This could get interesting now, Chris. Well, Jack Simpson has uh, been left in a heat by that challenge for one point. And Spurs are literally falling like flies. We're getting a replay here as he lost control of the ball point when he's coming with his studs up, sliding. He's made an attempt to get the ball, but it's, it's a high oh, one. He's caught him high. It's a horror tackle, that. Four minutes remaining of added time. The board says four. Perhaps not at this moment, but what a, what a way to finish a game if he could get a goal. Well, it's one of those, does he go up with £2 million of place in the Premier League? A point could be perhaps, very valuable. at the moment. Fraser's ball in, the heads go up again, it is in! It is a winner! Nathan Ake! Might have been seeing stars earlier on from a head injury. He's seeing stars all right now. Stars of a great nature. Bournemouth of stolen it against Spurs. A moment of history, it beckons their first ever win over Spurs. And Ake the hero as he's been so many times at the other end this season. Ake, the scorer this time, 91st minute, Bournemouth 1, Tottenham 0. Well, a last-minute header from Nathan Ake there. Neil, it was a, a crazy game, wasn't it? And we didn't expect that at all. Absolutely mad. It was a mad game. It was the, the real proverbial game of two halves. So he, in the first half, Tottenham obviously had their full complement of players, played very well. Mark Travers came in and made a fantastic debut, made a string of fine saves, keep the score level at half-time. And then a couple of sendings off either side of half-time, certainly turned the tide in our favour. Didn't look like the goal was going to come, but eventually Nathan came up trumps right at the death. And you mentioned the, the two red cards there. What was your take on them? Well, I have to say, I think the referee got both of them right. I mean, it was unfortunate because um, there was, you know, there was possibly a third red card in the game, an, an earlier red card with Eric Dyer. Uh, made another bad foul and then looked like he'd fouled Callum for a penalty as well. 
but um, you know you can't go around pushing people around on the pitch like like Son did um, and then you know it was an overzealous perhaps not too much intent with a tackle from Foyth but you know he, by letter of the law you know they both had to go there's no question. And you mentioned that that one on Callum Wilson that Eric Dyer did in the box it looked a certain penalty didn't it at the time? Well I think at the time I was looking sort of at the linesman and at the referee and you could argue that neither of them could actually see what happened. The first time we saw it um, we weren't too sure, but we obviously had the benefit of seeing it on the monitors afterwards. And he's clearly just chopped Callum. OK, he wasn't looking. You could argue it might have been a little bit accidental, but it's, it, it looked like a clear penalty, certainly second time round when we saw it, yeah. And we mentioned just a minute ago, but Mark Travers, what an unbelievable debut that was. Well, an unbelievable debut in more ways than one. Not only did he come in and deservedly get man of the match, making you know three or four fantastic saves in the first half, but you know the fact that the lad's only 19 years old, his only previous competitive experiences in the Southern League with Weymouth, um, you know, to, to come in and be so assured and so calm, you know, when we were watching him, he was virtually standing on the halfway line sometimes. It was just such a mature display for someone who's who's so young. I mean, 19 is young. <laughs> and we were there earlier in the season in the Premier League Cup against West Brom. I think after that game, we both said what a fantastic, fantastic performance he'd had. But it's completely different, isn't it, when you're live on Sky and you've got Spurs in the, in the Premier League? Well, exactly. We were at Hensford United that night. I think it was in about January or February in front of one man and his dog. And Mark Travers had a fantastic game that night. But you've got to put these things into perspective. You know, like you said, that was the Premier League Cup. You know, this is this is you know the biggest the biggest league in Europe now, as has been proved this week by the four English teams getting into the European finals. You know, and we we could we're going to finish 12th or 13th in this league, and this young teenage lad has come in. Um, like I said, with very little match experience behind him and perform like that, it was just it was a debut to remember and a, you know fantastic for the lad. And up the other end of the pitch, as you said a minute ago, it didn't quite look like that goal was going to come, and, and they left it late, didn't they? Well, we've seen it so many times following Bournemouth over the years. These last gasp, dramatic goals, and you know it's typical Bournemouth, if you like. Yes, it, it looked like it had a nil-nil draw written all over it. You know, we were knocking on the knocking on the door throughout throughout the second half. Um, and Nathan, you know, not for the first time, like the Liverpool game a couple of seasons ago, comes up trumps, powers through the box, fantastic header, and sends everyone home happy. And he pushed up into midfield last week. What did you make of his general performance, the goal aside? Well, it's difficult to, to it's difficult to ever pick fault with with Nathan Aki wherever he plays. I think he's played left back this season. He's obviously played centre back and midfield as well now. You know, he had that season at Watford where he was on loan, where he played a lot of left back there. Um, but it's like the manager said at, you know, in his press conference this morning. You know, Nathan's always got a smile on his face, so you never never really know whether he's unhappy or anything. So, but he certainly, you know, he, he played superbly. That superbly. And you wouldn't have thought, you know, losses to, to Burnley and Fulham at home. The last home win came against Chelsea and then Spurs come here. Final home game of the season and, and what a way to send the fans home happy. Well, exactly. And it's another it's another one to chalk off because, OK, we've had a point against Spurs in a 0-0 draw, but we've never beaten them. So um, I think it's just Manchester City now. We want to try and get a point off them at some time when we can. They're the only team in the Premier League we haven't got a point off. But yeah, exactly. Sends everybody home happy um, for the summer. A win against Spurs. Uh, and a win that's, you know, emphasised even more by the fact about what Spurs did during the week. You know, when was the last time that AFC Bournemouth beat a current Champions League finalist? OK, you can look back and, you know, we've beaten Liverpool and the likes of Nottingham Forest who won the Champions League and the European Cup as it was. As it was. You know, but what a feather in the cap that is to, to beat someone like Spurs. It was just memorable. Absolutely. Well, there's been some brilliant moments throughout the season and Eddie Howe reflected on that earlier in this morning's press conference. Let's take a look at what he had to say. Has it been a season of progress, would you say? I think it. I think overall it, it has to be considered that way. I think there's been challenges for us. I think there's seen quite a big transition in the team this year due to loads of different factors, but injuries have been a, a key thing of the second half of the campaign. It's opened up opportunities for younger players. I think the average age of our squad has come down uh, or our team has come down, which I think is a really good thing for the future. So um, maybe that's led to some inconsistencies in our performances and certainly something that we're focused on in the summer for next year. Well, it's been another solid season in the Premier League. Neil, there's been so many amazing moments, haven't there? What, what stood out for you? Well, I think you've got to, you've got to go back right to the, to the start of the season. It was a record-breaking start. 20 points from the first 10 games, um, unprecedented from, from Bournemouth before, and it really laid the foundations for, you know, 
preserving the status for a fifth consecutive season. Let's you know, let's not lose sight of what an achievement that is. Particularly, again, I refer back to what's happened this week: four English teams in the finals of the European, uh, the Champions League, and the and the Europa League. You know, and there we are. Little Bournemouth, if you like, well, certainly that's how we used to be known. And we're going to be finishing in mid-table in a league that includes teams like that, clubs like that. It, it, it just, you can't take away from what a fantastic achievement it is. And the other one to throw in there is the fact that there's only two teams in the Premier League who've been promoted and not been relegated. That's Bournemouth and Brighton. So that just, just, just shows you how difficult it is to stay in there. And we pulled off some fantastic results this season. Obviously, we've just mentioned Spurs. But that 4-0 against Chelsea, that was incredible, wasn't it? That was a that was a memorable night, but you've got to remember the game before at West Ham, the the two 0 win at home to West Ham. We were under a little bit of pressure going into that game. We were on a not a great run. Um, the fixtures, you know, they're all they're all tough fixtures, obviously. But West Ham at home and Chelsea at home, you know, can you maybe get three points out of those two games and get six? And all of a sudden, a little bit of the pressure's off. So it was a fantastic January and two two really important results. But every season you get important results. I remember a few years ago, you know, we went to Chelsea away and won and we beat Man United and West Brom. Three games on the trot, I think it was in a December time. And all of a sudden, it just eases that little bit of pressure. And of course, this, the second half in, in the season in particular, we've had a lot of injuries. And you think if, if you know, that hadn't been the case, that first half of the season, the form might have been replicated. Well, I think a lot of people lose sight of the fact that, you know, you've had half of the team ripped out, if you like. Right? And we're not just like injuries for a few days or a few weeks, but these are season-ending injuries that, you know, people like Lewis Cook and Andrew Sermon and Simon Francis and Charlie Daniel. I mean, the list, the list is going on and on. I don't think I've known a season like it in the Premier League where we've had such bad injuries. You know, and we're going to finish mid-table, Zoe. You know, it's, 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 you know, you've got to take your hat off to everybody. And individually, there's been some some brilliant seasons out there. Callum Wilson, he's got in the England squad. Ryan Fraser, he's right at the top of the, the assist chart with, with Eden Hazard for most of the season. It's been a really good campaign in, individually as well, hasn't it? The list, the list goes on again. You know, David Brooks has come in his first taste of the Premier League. Jefferson Lerma, let's not lose sight of the fact that first season in English football as well. You know, that's really difficult. Um, he struggles a little bit with the language, obviously, coming from Colombia and having played in Spain. But what a signing he's proved to be. You know, there's a lot of teams that would love to have someone like Jefferson Lerma as the heartbeat of their team. And David Brooks, and like you said, and of course, Callum's come up trumps with the goals and Ryan with all these assists. It's just been... We could you, go on and on and on, could, couldn't we? We could. And then you mentioned there David Brooks and, and Jefferson Lerma. It's their first season, both of them in the Premier League. Obviously last year, David Brooks playing in the Championship, but not week in, week out for, for Sheffield United. So for him to come into this team and you know play as regularly as he has, he's done so well, hasn't he? He's done tremendously well. Like you said, a, a, not a bit part player at Sheffield United, but I know he had a, a couple of injuries as well, which restricted him. Uh, but, you know, taking it like a, like a proverbial duck to water, if you like, and... You know what the what Jefferson and, and David Brooks can achieve next season, and you know I can't wait to see really because they've they've certainly put the platform in there for for some great performances. Absolutely, and and you alluded to it earlier, but a fifth season in the Premier League—that's you know something that would never have even been dreamed of ten years ago. Well, I think the clubs had five seasons in the second tier, the two in the Championship and three in the late 1980s. You know, now we're going to be having five seasons in the top flight. I know that people keep saying you shouldn't keep har harping back to, you know, the past, but you know, let's not lose sight. You know, this club spent a long, long time in the in the the bottom the bottom tier and the, the you know the third tier. You know, and now we're we're sort of looking at the second tier and the first tier. It's just you know, it's pinching yourself stuff really. Absolutely. Well, it's been quite the season. We round off our campaign this weekend at Selhurst Park, but it was quite the evening here at Vitality Stadium when Crystal Palace visited earlier in the season. Let's remind ourselves of what happened that night. Nil nil Bournemouth Palace. Smith ball into the penalty area. Picked up by Wilson. Square to Brooks. Leopard in! And David Brooks with his first Premier League goal. And it's an absolute peach. Onto his left foot. In off the underside of the bar. Into the top corner. He's making waves in the top flight is David Brooks. 1 0 Cherries. Well, quite an amazing move. And it was Adam Smith who got the cross in with his left foot. Drove it across the face of goal. I think it was it Callum or, or Callum who held the ball up. Ah! 
Zaha gets a fortunate break of the ball, and now Van Aanholt ghosting in left-hand side, right-footed shot, that is some equaliser from Patrick Van Aanholt, who has lashed it into the same top corner that David Brooks found earlier on, and Palace have been threatening at the start of this second half, and they get the goal that their possession deserves. 55th minute, 1-1. Well, yeah, you have to say, it, it seemed likely the way they were going, and it was the pass-through. Just to keep it to beat, of course, but he didn't have a lot of angle, decided to go with power, and smashes it in the top corner. Just a little suspicion of upside, I think he was just a yard. The substitutes they brought on have got extra defensive artillery here. It's a penalty, is it? It is a penalty! It's Lerma who's gone down, Bournemouth have got a penalty! Yellow card in there as well for Sacco. Well, the referee had just literally warned them. And Lerma has gone down, face down on the edge of the penalty area. And he has won the Cherries a spot kick. And, who, and Stanislas has got the ball. Let's have a look at the replay here, Willows. It comes in, Lerma's got it. He's just got a clout, a flailing arm from Sacco. Can Stanislas possibly win it? Right footed, in the net, down the middle. Junior Stanislas. Two and two, and is that enough for Bournemouth against Crystal Palace? Bournemouth two, Crystal Palace one. Well, I did have a mind when I thought who gives someone like Stanislaw South would. Well, a fine evening at Vitality Stadium there. Neil, it's going to be uh, quite the occasion on Sunday, isn't it? 12th v 13th, last game of the season, anything can happen. Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, you know, you could say that it's a, it's a bit of a dead rubber, but far from it. You know, there's a there's a substantial purse at stake for the team finishing higher in the Premier League. Um, Crystal Palace and us have finished on the same points tally twice in the past three seasons. They're just ahead of us at the moment on goal difference. Um, their home form is not great. They are, I think they're second from bottom in the home league table in the Premier League. But where they've really turned it on is away from home, where they're fifth. And you think that's some achievement when you see you've got the likes of Spurs and Man United and Man City, who are all at the top of that league. And then Roy Hodgson's done a fantastic job away from home. I think they've got something like 29 points away from home. Home, uh, Selhurst Park hasn't been a happy hunting ground for them this season, but they're going to be formidable opposition there, as we've always found when we've been there. Where we're unbeaten, let's not forget. And it's also worth mentioning that 47 points, it's still very much doable. That would be the highest that the Cherries have ever recorded in a single Premier League season. And, and another, another reason not to lose sight of you know, how far the club has come this season. The manager was asked this morning about whether he feels the team has progressed this season and, and he thinks they have. Well, there you go. If they were to win on, on Sunday, it would be a record points tally. It's still a fantastic points tally anyway. Let's not, you know, let's not take away from that. But all to play for, certainly all to play for. And in terms of the Palace players, Zaha is the obvious one to look out for. But Aaron Wan-Bissaka has enjoyed a good season as well, hasn't he? Really break, a, a breakthrough season for him. Yeah, he's really caught the eye with some fantastic performances. Very dangerous player to play against. Sort of player you'd probably want in your team. Um, unsettles defenders, you know, very quick and stuff like that. So certainly want to keep an well, more than want to keep an eye on if you like. And in terms of our injuries, unfortunately, we're in exactly the same position as we were last week. The, the players that were out last week, Eddie Howe confirmed that they're not going to be back for this week. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'd be, I said it's not a dead rubber, but there's no point in rushing a player back for the last game of the season or playing someone who's not 100% fit. Give these guys as long as they need and make sure that they're ready to hit the ground running at the start of pre-season. But then you can say, well, you know, the guys who played last week, so, you know, they got a 1-0 win against Spurs. So, uh, you know, if it's the same team, then uh, we've got a great chance. And we've talked a lot about away form this season and it's perhaps not been where Eddie Howe would have liked it to have been. But four points from the last two away games is, is nothing to be ashamed of, is it? Southampton and Brighton. Yeah, I mean, there was a run halfway through the season where, you know, we didn't win an away game for quite a long time. But, you know, looking back at those fixtures, we were playing the likes of played Manchester United twice. We played Spurs, we played Manchester City. You know, if you look at the league table, not many of the teams in the bottom half have got points against the top six away from home. You know, and we're, we're in that bracket. Um, but where, where we've done really well, Zoe, is we've won away games that we've needed to win. Uh, the places like Huddersfield, like Brighton. And, you know, but for a great save at the end against Southampton, we would have, we would have won there for the first time in our history as well. So, you know, we've won where we've needed to. 
and that Spurs win last weekend. They'll really, really want to back it up this weekend, won't they? And end the season with, with back-to-back wins. Well, you always want to go into the summer on the back of a win if you can. I know it keeps you know confidence high and everybody's buzzing going into pre-season or the break or international duty. So, yeah, everybody wants to get a win behind them and back-to-back wins. What would that be? The Spurs at home and Crystal Palace away. What a great way to finish the season. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a really exciting game at Selhurst Park on Sunday. That's all we've got time for today. But if you've been joining us throughout the season, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you up at Crystal Palace on the weekend. Bye for now.